welcome to whatever we're going to call this show. It's going to be up for grabs. We're going to do votes for it. Free flow, female flow, three bitches and a white lady. Not sure. But the main premise of this show is that we're four women talking about real issues, funny issues, and we're speaking nicely, not barking over each other and listening. And I think that's the real key to life and successfulness is is listening, to, actually listening to people. And we're going to do it with humor and fun, and it's going to be a great afternoon. And i uh, just going to introduce ourselves. I'm Felicia Madison. I'm a comedian. I am the talent booker and the director of New Talent at Westside Comedy Club. And I'm representing the marginalized female woman. <laughs> <laughs> Daya, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you for that minority voice, Felicia. It's so important. <laughs> Snaps. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Daya Lakshmi Narayanan. Uh, I'm South Asian, which means uh, that I'm not Asian enough for people to blame COVID on me, but I am brown enough to be hated by Trump supporters. There you go. <laughs> I'm Asian enough for COVID to be blamed on me. <laughs> And I'm Jocelyn. I am a lawyer turned comedian. So, you know, I make great life choices. <laughs> Hi, I'm Holly Harper. I am a sketch comedy writer and just a writer in general and turned a stand comedian with a son in the frame. Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, I like a soft heart and a stiff drink. That's pretty much a I soft am. heart and a stiff drink. And what about the dick? <laughs> oh, that's what I thought she was going to say. Must be firm. Must be firm. Must, Must be firm. firm. <laughs> well, here we are. I said it was going to be real view and funny. So we have different segments for the week. The first segment is going to be Karen Says, which I'm Karen. <laughs> <laughs> so my big beef is don't tell me to shut up. I've been noticing a lot that people are constantly telling, especially white women, but women in general, to shut up or a bitch. Like uh, Ocasio-Cortez is in the news because a other lawmaker called her a bitch for speaking out. There is a lawyer that it was uh, his, her house was shot because she stated her opinion, an anti-feminist. And um, on the Dave Chappelle show, he called numerous nasty names to women who were speaking their mind horribly, like they had horrible things to say, but were still speaking their mind. So my, my thing that I want to put out there is I think what we say is we could be called bitches and cunts and pussies, but only we can do it. <laughs> no one else. So what do you guys think? Take back, bitch. <laughs> I don't want it. Y'all can have it. I'm <laughs> fine without it in my life. I love it. I, it's very, it's, it's sort of form of like both power and humor. Like, bitch, please. Like, that's both funny and it gets my point across. I, I, yeah, I, I do find that in stand up, whenever someone has a punchline and it's bitch or bitch, please, if they take that out, the joke is less funny. I think bitch is a crutch that people rely on just because it's a term that, that you know, gets to people. So if your joke is not funny, if you take out bitch, you're relying on a crutch is what I think. I agree. I mean, that's the same with any cuss. If you take out any cuss word in a comedy yep. set, it, it'll make but, it less funny. So it's, it's always a little bit of a, it can be a crutch or it can be a seasoning, however you want to. But if Jocelyn yeah. wants to call herself bitch, I support her 100%. But I'm not going to call her a bitch. <laughs> oh, call me a bitch. Call me a bitch. Call me a bitch. What's so weird about like the whole thing with bitch and like, I feel like, you know, with women being told to shut up because I feel like there's two different trains of thought. Like on one train of thought, like the whole Karen thing is like a reaction to like a pretty historical thing of racist white women intruding and on someone's business that they're not part of to shut them down and something that they're not part of at all. But then, and that's one thing. But the other thing is just misogyny. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like, while there are people are being told to shut up, that's wrong. But I, and, and but I feel like there there needs to be a differentiation between like why someone's being told to shut up. Because I would never peg you, Felicia, as a Karen because I don't see you asking if people have their papers in <laughs> Wegmans. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna complain about the mushrooms because you did buy some mushrooms. You know what I mean? And you have a right to say something about the mushrooms. So if somebody's gonna call you a Karen for asking about the mushrooms. They're just being an asshole, you know what I mean? And they're just being a dick. But it's like if Karen's like, why are these people here? 
well, that's a Karen. So I feel like we have two, it's like, it's like a, almost like a hurricane, like a cold front meets a hot front. You know what I mean? And then it gets mixed into this hurricane that a lot of times does not really make a lot of sense. You know, I think the racial thing, we have Karens in Singapore, where I'm from originally, you know, these Asian, they're usually middle-aged Asian aunties. And they're like, kick up a fuss, but it's none of their business. I think it's like, maybe it's a middle-aged woman thing. I also think that you're right because um, th- there... Right now, we don't want white women to shut up. We want white ma- women to talk to other white people and tell them, hey, stop calling the police. Or we need white women right now to use their voices because they're powerful. But we also need those Karens to, I don't want to say, I don't like to tell women to shut up. But like what happened in my neighborhood in San Francisco, where some Filipino guy was painting Black Lives Matter on his house. And this like white cosmetic person like tried to call the police. That's not a shut up thing. That's just a mind your own business. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the big difference. It's like, are you speaking up for yourself and for people or are you just being selfishly for you? Do you know what I mean? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's a big difference because that woman went out of her way with her neighbor's home and he owned a home. And she was like, I know you don't live here. <laughs> like, that was, that was yeah. a crazy thing. The police showed up, they were like, hey, Ben, or whatever. And he, she was like, but, like if, so, if, the, if the three of us uh, w- women of color are not around and someone says something to, to Felicia in confidence, like, what do you think about those Indians? I don't want Felicia to shut up. I want her to be like, I like exactly. one Indian. She's on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I want her. Hey, I know a good one. No, no, definitely. Like you use your, use your powers for good. Yeah. You use your powers for good. Like if you're going to have any kind of uh, privilege, you use it for good. Like, I was explaining to my daughter the other day about how, like, yeah, we're, we don't have male privilege and we don't have white privilege, but we have able-bodied privilege. You know what I mean? So if you see, like, eight, like or you have neurotypical privilege, just different privileges or just heterosexual privilege. So if you use it for good, but if I was like, oh, get these gay people out of here, I'm being like, I'm being like a black heron just for gay people. Mm-hmm. That's a good. That's a good term. So Jocelyn said there could be Singaporean Karens, and Holly <laughs> said there can be Black Karens. Well, um, I do see Black Karens when they're like, "Oh, I don't think it should be so many LGBT." So why do we have to be concerned about that? That's some Black Karen shit. That's some Black Karen shit. Because <laughs> they're using their privilege. I think the term for that is Felicia. <laughs> no, Felicia. <laughs> Police is like nobody wants either, that. Either way. Well, I think the problem is also that we just haven't had a voice for so long. I mean, think about it when we got the right to vote and when we, you know, finally getting out there. And I think the main problem is it's, you know, sometimes sometimes people have crazy things and, you know, but it's emotional. I think they react emotionally. Like if it was a guy and he got into a fist fight or something, that's how they would respond to something they didn't like. But the fact that we're women and we're emotionally representing our feelings and we're being told to shut up, which is the problem. And like you said, Daya, if they don't, if you don't talk to the person and engage them in conversation, which is like what we're doing, you're not going to change their point of view. If you tell them to shut up, they're just going to like back up into the corner and come back fighting even stronger. Yeah. So that actually... That was, that was a topic I'm going to talk about today. Have you ever been following the Portland protests going on? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. So I'm in Portland, Oregon right now. Oh, yes. And did you hear this little side story about how a naked woman came to the scene of the Fed? Yeah. And I got saw it on breakfast? Twitter, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it is an interesting visual of how feminine power can actually be very powerful against a more masculine force. and. In 2003, during the, the Liberia Civil War, it was actually women that got the warring factions to come together. They got them all in a room, made them negotiate, and when any of the men tried to leave, they would threaten to take their clothes off. And at some point, men were jumping out of the window just to, like get away from these women. And in the end, they came to, to, a, to a peace agreement because of this feminine power of just being not overly aggressive but grounded in their power. And so women definitely have a power that's different from the you would know, just slam someone on the head with, with a baton. So is, this the naked, is this the naked lady with the legs spread on the, yeah. on the ground? Yeah. Doing ballet <laughs> poses. That's so interesting, Jocelyn, about um, Liberia, because it seems like that power of the body, like people have used it 
to sexualize women and to assault women. But if you control it yourself, it can be very powerful. I never thought about that before. I mean, look, if all the women back in the 60s told the men, all right, we're not fucking you until we have the right to vote, we would have to vote the next day. Yeah, yeah I have to admit, like, I see your, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Holly. But I'm just saying, like, I totally see what you're talking about, but I have to admit, and I don't know if I'm ashamed or I just feel conflicted, but when I first saw her, like, on the ground with, like, legs spread, I had, like, a really negative reaction to it. Really? How interesting. Like, what was your reaction? I felt like, oh, so you're going to save it with your pussy. Like, oh, <laughs> that's, wow. Wow, I your pussy have will... all my problems. <laughs> I just felt like, oh, your two lips will solve everything. Maybe, like, I just felt like... Maybe it's called get a peace protest. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like, like, come on. I get, you know, I guess for me, you know what? I was just in a... And a, maybe I just caught me in a bad place because I've just been reading so much about the how they removed that statue in Central Park of Marion Sims, who was that gynecologist who was like considered the father of gynecology. But basically, they found out that he had just experimented on hundreds of enslaved women. You know what I mean? And that's how they perfected gynecology. So as a black woman, that just kind of felt like so we see your pussy, like like that's not going to solve anything for me. You know what I mean? Like. Like, is my, my pussy's never been taken that, like, oh, like, it's never been like that. Sorry, with black pussy. It's just never been like that. So I just yeah. kind of felt like I get it. And I was like, that is a powerful image. But for me, I just kind of felt like, if I get out there, I'm like, ah, like, I don't feel you know, like <laughs> anything's going to happen with this, you know? Yeah, there is a, start a laughing if it were me. <laughs> there is a school of thought that traces all the way back in, into centuries ago where female deities were that that pussy was a source of power. You have these mythologies where mm -hmm. a, a god is angry or there'll be no sun or no rain and then a goddess will come and, and flash a pussy at the, at the god who was like upset and then he'll laugh and then the sun will come out again. So that pussy power is not something that is um, altogether new. It has been in, in like the lineage for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, like, it's, sorry. It's, it's, it just the, it's just women on men. It wouldn't work women to women. <laughs> You'd be like, you yeah, whatever. Like, I'd be like, yeah. Like, you need to clean the left one. The left one don't look right. You know, I, I think like the left one's hanging work, out. It would also work on my gay guys if I just threatened to take off my clothes. I'd be like, please, no. Whatever you want. No, I don't like this. You'd be like, I want out. No. Well, I think that's, the, that's traditionally been the way uh, we have, this is going to be controversial, but the way we control men, because men, yeah. you know, are really we can control them with sex that's the way we get what we want and you can control your husband with sex that's, that's be honest. I, I think jocelyn has a really good point like some of these disgusting u.s senators how are they getting laid like <laughs> who are these women that continue to sleep with mitch mcconnell just stop you know like he, uh, he, you know, i just pictured the turtle on top i was like no yeah. oh, like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, like Girl, the stop, turtle. stop allowing these men to feel sexy. Like they need to just go away. Like, so I agree. Who are these women who are marrying and being with these gross dudes who are <laughs> doing bad things in the world? Like and uh, staying with them when they cheat. Right. Yeah. Like, well, like the, 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 the guy, the, the officer who murdered George, George Floyd, his wife is Asian. Yeah. And she filed for divorce, but we don't know if that's to preserve the assets. That was her brother standing next to him, keeping people back. Oh, while no way. George Chauvin, yes, that was his. Uh, that's his brother-in-law. Wow. Yeah, that was standing guard. That was her brother. So, so business. That hate is a family affair. That's a family affair. <laughs> it's that's a true. family. Yeah, they got that's a family affair with them. Okay, I do want to, we're gonna move. On, we're gonna move on to the next topic, or I do want to. One more thing about um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. The person that called her a bitch. His name is Ted Yo Ho. Like imagine, <laughs> he's just saying insults in his head all day. Just saying his last name. He's like Yo Ho. That's me. <laughs> I'm Ted Yo Ho. Like so. That's why he's out there calling people bitches. And for him to call he's anybody anything. Like, like did you see him? He looks like a penis with a suit on. Like he has no discern. Like he, I was like, you're the last person to be calling attention 
to yourself. Also, may I point out that he earned a bachelor's degree in animal science from the University of Florida. So he does know about bitches, but uh, <laughs> Ocasio-Cortez is not one of them. It's not one of them. Okay, so we're gonna move on to, uh, who's gonna do Creep of the Week? Should I do it? Should I introduce Creep of the Week? So we're going to do a segment uh, every week. We're going to pick the creep of the week and kind of would like for it to be a guy, but this week it's going to be a girl. It's a uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh. Oh yeah. What do you guys think? I just think the funniest thing is I read when she was arrested and the cops knocked on her door and she went upstairs into the room and locked the door. Yeah. What, that was, what was she doing? I don't understand. Good plan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's the creep of the week. Like she, uh, she's no better than any common sex trafficker. That's that's just who. How do you pronounce her name? Just Lane. Just Lane, I think it is. Just Lane. I'm like, I, I, oh, we got to like, how do you pronounce her name? But yeah, she's a trafficker. I mean, we've seen yeah. all the photos with her, thousands of girls. She's. Uh, but do horrible. you think maybe she was a victim also? No, I don't buy that. Not for a second. Not for a second. Adult women, they know what they're doing. This woman was paid out the yin yang. She had crazy money. And she did this to girls that were like 14, 15, like, come on. And she, when she was very grown, she wasn't super young when all that started. Like, she was a grown woman. Yeah. She was a grown woman. But she had tragedy in her life where her father killed herself. She lost all her money. So she was probably down on her life and probably came under the, you know, care. <clears throat> of, I'm spacing out on his name. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, and who knows? Some kind of Stockholm Syndrome where she <laughs> bonded with Jeffrey and got under his influence and she was yeah. just his puppet. And there were a lot of other women that did this also, by the way, that helped get t teenage girls, young women who came, he went, a, he went after, his MO was to go after the woman who didn't have any you know, money or self-esteem or was really down and out and offered them a lot. Uh, this is why I, I feel very strongly that it's, it's, for me, it's not right to say men are the problem. The mm -hmm. problem isn't men, white men, black men, Asian men, whatever. The problem is patriarchy. The problem is the system that says proximity to abusers and men and using girls and women that's the problem not an individual gender so the, so i completely agree creep of the week can be any gender i'm i'm very liberal let's <clears throat> next week let's pick a non-binary creep it can be anyone that's creepy <laughs> but i think you know that Ghislaine is a creep when trump says I wish her well. When Trump wishes you well, you yeah. are 100% a creep. You're garbage. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're garbage. Yeah. And I know, but I, I, when I think about Ghislaine, it, I, I can't feel sorry for her because it's saying like, we can sit there, she had a hard life. You know how many pimps have had hard lives? Do you know what I mean? That have grown up in complete abject poverty and become pimps? That have had hard luck stories? So I'm just kind of like, Richard I can't feel sorry for her. Richard Pryor grew up in a brothel. He basically mm -hmm. saw people around him dying. He was sexually abused and he tried to use his uh, victimhood to make people laugh, to be vulnerable on stage. So you know who else didn't have a dad growing up? Barack Obama didn't mm -hmm. have a dad. Like just because you don't have a dad doesn't mean you get to be a shitty person. Exactly. Doesn't mean you get exactly. a classic woman if you don't have a dad. But I think maybe it's not a gender thing. I do agree with you, Diet, that it's not a gender thing because these are women perpetuating these crimes on other women. So I think it's a people thing. We just have shitty people in this world. <laughs> yeah, well, that gets back to the Karen. They're just shitty people. Like, I, I said... <laughs> I, one of the shows I was on, I said, stop calling them white women. Let's call them what they are, white trash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because, you know, they're just not smart or educated or just weren't raised properly. It's not, you know, they were white. <clears throat> so, well, yeah. Dave Chappelle they, had this bit, there are black people and then there are black people. Do you know which bit I'm talking about? He oh, oh, the like, Chris Rock bit? Oh, Chris Rock. Is the Chris Rock bit when he said there's black people, there's niggas? You talk yeah, about that bit? One. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, from the 90s. Oh. Yeah, I remember that bit. I remember that bit very well. It's funny how Jocelyn remembers that as black and black. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he had this whole joke about grand opening, grand closing. You know what I mean? Like, he had the whole thing about within the black community. And he's gotten spanked over these views because yeah. now everybody, everybody gets spanked now. That's just the deal. Mm -hmm. you, know, you said something in the past decades, it's going to come back to you. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I get what you're saying. 
10 years down the road, we're going to get cancelled for shitting on white women. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, it is not politically right to shit on the majority anymore. I just thought of But a then white women will be in the minority, so then it's really wrong to shit on people in the minority. Because America will be all like brownish. So correct, yes, correct. one yep. day Felicia will be an oppressed minority, and girl, we're here for you when that happens. <laughs> I'm just not a sun panic. We're going to take back Whitey, only you guys can use Whitey and Karen. Yeah. Okay. So next, next topic, PC topics, pre-corona or just politically correct, whatever you want. Uh, I liked this uh, uh, thing that I saw in The Onion this week, that um, the Washington Redskins are changing their name to the DC Redskins. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, it's great that they've been thinking about it for so long and it took this tragedy that's going on in our lives for them actually to make a change but how do you feel about all these changing of things and cancel culture and pulling down statues do you, yes no what do you think i can't believe we've gotten this far with this bullshit like just to be complete honest like why in the world are these statues these were traitors these were tra they were traitors to our country. Why would we? It's like, what, would you expect there to be statues of Hitler in and we're in 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 Jerusalem, like or, or in, in Israel? Like, come on, like, why would that be there? And it's funny because someone said to me, "Will you tear down George Washington's?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <sighs> hell yeah." I'm like, I don't because I don't think people, they're like, "Why he was this? He was that?" I'm like, he tore the teeth out of enslaved Africans mouths for his own dentures Whoa. while they were alive like maybe if we actually knew who and what these people were we wouldn't even be thinking well should we tear it down they'd be like oh hell no so I'm all for tearing it down because there's a lot of people that could be renamed like we need statues of and not just I mean yes I want black people and I want black women but there's lots of women of all races and lots of people that do statues need to that I would rather see up and see around like real heroes. Yeah, I think that what's what's interesting right now is the the Washington Redskins are not changing their name because suddenly they all went to meditation and they had a heart opening and they're like, we must do the right thing by the Navajo Nation. Like capitalism is affecting their revenue. Yeah. That's why they're changing <laughs> yeah. their name. Yeah. Let's be really clear. Like what the why behind it. It's it, it like so we could talk about whether it's right or wrong or whatever, but the same thing with cancel culture. It's really hard to get completely canceled unless you're accused of a crime and you go to jail. But if you're kind of canceled in social media, you just get a different following. You just get, as Felicia said, you get like a white trash following. Or you get a <laughs> bunch of bros and they will prop you up and send you money and come to your shows. But no one's really getting canceled unless you're a woman over 35, then you have no auditions, you're canceled for life. So that's the only way to get canceled in the enter entertainment industry. It's to, be a, it's to be a woman that ages. That's how yes. you get canceled. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, well, it's funny. Somebody brought up a really interesting point to me on social media. They were like, we cancel like people like um, Chrisette Michelle. She was a black R&B artist, but we don't cancel Kanye. They were both supporting Trump. Like, why don't we cancel? So it's like, yeah, there's a bit of misogyny there and also who gets canceled and for what? Like, people don't want to cancel Kanye. He's, you know, he's crazier than a cat on crack, but it's like, they're like, he's got that good music. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So the cancel culture is very kind of arbitrary sometimes. Yeah, Megan yeah. Kelly got like booted out right away, you know. Who? Which, I'm sorry? Megan Kelly with oh. the, the, the blackface you know, thing. And so many men have done it and been accused since then. And they're, they're fine. Yeah. Well, also because she was like, I just don't understand. Like <laughs> if she had messed up and then been like, all right. Yeah. But she was like, I just don't get it. I was like, girl, sometimes like, shutting up is free. Like, shutting <laughs> up is free 99 girl. Like avail yourself of it. Don't tell her to shut up. <laughs> there you go. Sometimes it is good to shut up. <laughs> it's, it's just important to keep learning because have I messed up? Yes. Have I said something politically incorrect? Yes. Have I accidentally um, used a word that's, that's wrong? Like, I just learned from Holly uh, about neurodivergency now. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even like, <laughs> know all the things that I'm not supposed to say. But I think the point is, 
you have to grow and learn and you have to be open to it. But it's not about labeling someone a bad person or a good person. We all are sexist. We're all racist. We all have these thoughts. It's just like, how do we learn? I mean, we have to be people who value education for a lifetime and be able to be smart. Like, for example, uh, a friend of mine gave me like... Um, like some, like some spa stuff, like for my face. And one of them is a charcoal mask. I will never put that on because someone could come to the door with oh me and I will get canceled. I am not <laughs> wearing the charcoal mask. <laughs> yeah, but you, you came to my home. Like I didn't come out, you came to my home. <laughs> oh, I know that charcoal mask, that is funny. I've wondered about that before. Cause I'm kind of like, put the mask on. I'm like, do they understand it? I'm not taking a chance. I'm not, there could be cameras somewhere. I, there, I, I, that charcoal mask is going in the trash. When I want to experience white privilege, I put my white mask on. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that won't be I, going on anytime soon. <laughs> I think, so the, the PC culture is something that I've thought quite a bit about. And I think one of the things is who, who are we mattering here? So for example, um, some people have complicated names, right? My Chinese name is Xie Bi Zi. If I insist that it's offensive to me if you don't pronounce my name correctly, I, should I be prioritized or should your ease of pronunciation be prioritized, right? So similarly for not using a, a term. So for example, I just heard that you can't use the word tribe anymore if you're being really politically correct. And Tri the word tribe. 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 Oh, -R -I -B -E. okay. Yeah. Like, oh, you can't say, oh, these people are part of my tribe because it's offensive to Native Americans. Yeah, it's like Eskimo oh. pies are not, you know, they're doing that too now. It's like a certain set. And oh. powwow, oh, let's have a powwow, like a meeting also offensive to Native Americans. And I'm like, okay, but are we looking at my intention for saying it? Am I saying, I, let's have a powwow because I'm hating on Native Americans? Or am I just saying, let's, let's get together for a meeting, right? So I do think intention does matter. But then how sensitive do we want to be to that receiving person if there happens to be a Native American there? Like, oh, I don't want to hear these words. And I think it comes back to the name thing. Whose comfort are we prioritizing? Is there a balance? And I think there should be a balance, right? If there's no intention to offend, no derogatory meaning behind what we're saying. If, if I'm saying, oh, this is my tribe, I'm using the word tribe in a positive manner. These are my people. Well, I think it's in how you correct people. You know what I mean? And how you come at them. Like, if you come at somebody and say, hey, you know, blah, 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 that's one thing. But if you're like, you can't say that, no. blah, 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 then it's just kind of like, no, now you're just being rude to me. You're just looking yeah. for an opportunity to be the bigger person, to be the, 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 the correct one, to be the person in charge. Yeah, so, it's, boy, it's, like, virtue, in it's virtue signaling. It's like, how can I shame someone and let them know that they're wrong? Rather than being like, wow, maybe this person honestly made a mistake. Let me be inquisitive and see if I have the ability to teach them something or they can learn. But shaming has never allowed people to change themselves because then they just double down on it. Yeah, they get- Well, I have to admit, I, I mean, I don't get checked often because I am a black woman, but I got checked on something recently and I was like, I was shocked and I was ashamed. Tell and me. I, was, I was putting together a project with some people and they were like, I don't see- any LGBT presence, like none. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And they were like, so but why? And they were like, why, why wouldn't it be there? Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I, I honestly didn't even think about it. Like it just didn't even cross my mind. Right. And I felt like, so oh my God. men. Yeah, that's but that's let me tell you, the way mine. one person like, one person was like a little, but the other person was like, well, I can see that you just, do you know what I mean? Like the other person was like, so let's just fix it. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's just, it made me realize like, wow, it really isn't how you point things out to people and then how you bring it that, it, that makes like, the difference. It's like in a relationship too, right? I learned exactly. so much from this past relationship I had where when we start getting back in our positions and fighting, it just escalates. Kind of like how I'm talking about the, the feminine being able to counteract the masculine force. But when one of us says it from our feelings, like when you say this, I feel this way. So if say a Native American was like, okay, when you say the word powwow or the word tribe, I feel like you are taking words from my culture and using it in like a totally different context. And I feel that 
that's hurtful to me because of whatever reason, then I can be more, oh, this is really impacting a person. This is not just yeah. someone. Make, I think my, my, uh, my beef with the PC culture is a lot of it, a lot of times it's not even the people being affected by it promoting this. It is like white women usually being like, you can't say this. I've had so many white people get offended on my behalf for shit that I don't even care about. <laughs> I just want to say on behalf of all Hindus, Jocelyn saying I don't have beef is highly offensive <laughs> to millions of people in India. <laughs> but, but I do think I thought it should be like, I thought it I should be respectful for, to you because y'all don't eat beef, right? And I, I don't want, I, what, wait, what, did I what say? would they say? Would they say I had no goat with you? Look, I had no goat. <laughs> I have yeah, no, no goat with you. I, I have no shawarma with you. I have no I shawarma with you. I come in uh, in in peace. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I think that Jocelyn has a good point about about the names. So my name is Daya Lakshmi Narayanan. I do have. I mean, now I'm a a point in my career where I can flex on the MC a little bit and be like, get my name right. The, <laughs> reason, the reason is because. We have, in our culture, in American culture, have said words like Tchaikovsky, Stradivarius, Zach Galifianakis. Like, I can Thank say you. those names. Why can't you say Lakshmi Narayan, which is literally written out phonetically when my, like, it's not written in Tamil, which is like a bunch of squiggly lines. I'm not having you learn a squiggly line. Word. Right. You're not, yeah, it's not, yeah. It's yeah. literally written in your language and you just make your mouth, make the noise of every letter and you will get it right. And so I think I now- I would love to see a comedy show host have a lineup with your name in squiggly lines. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like- Well, Jocelyn, you, you know Tamil because you lived in Singapore. Uh, Tamil is one of the official languages of Singapore. Doesn't it look like a bunch of squiggles it, everywhere? It does. And that's not offensive. It does look like that. <laughs> like, I, I really see what you're saying. It's like if we can say Charlize Theron, we can say Lupita Nyong'o. You know what I mean? Like if you can learn to say one, you can learn to say another. But I also think my parents are immigrants. They can barely say the name John. They go, <laughs> John. And I'm like, no. So I think we have to be patient with people. If someone is, like Jocelyn was saying, making a good faith effort to get my name right, and their intention is to try, I'm cool with that. If someone's like, can I just call you Donnie? Like, I, 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 no, 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 you can't because you're being dumb. But if someone tries their best or asks questions and they're coming with the right intention, I'm like, you know, just do the best you can. Like, don't, don't worry about it. Well, okay, at Donnie. <laughs> A lot of is about to call me Donnie. That's fine. <laughs> All right. You can call me bitch and I can call you Donnie. I think it's a fair trade. <laughs> Just don't call me Karen. <laughs> so a lot of interesting topics that I think we're going to continue to um, delve into deeper because a lot of other subtopics that I was thinking of from just this conversation. But let's end with the bad news and the good news of the week. So what do you guys want to start with? The bad news or the good news? Mm. Start with the bad news. The bad, bad, yeah. Okay, the, bad, the, good news. the bad news of the week uh, was an article in the New York Times saying that alcohol is not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that not having alcohol is not good for you. Like, <laughs> no, it turns Felicia into a Karen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot, alcohol saves asses. You know what I mean? A lot of people might get their ass whooped if there was not a Shiraz lying around. Like, mm. uh, I mean, that was the one thing that was keeping me sane during this. Now they're telling me that it's uh, all lobbying, that it's actually not a glass of wine a day is not good for you. I mean, oh, man. I mean, it's the one thing getting said that? that? It was in the New York Times. There's a whole article on it. But not that I believe everything I read in the New York Times, but which is another beef I have, so we'll move on. But okay, <laughs> the good news of the week is I also read in the New York Times, I might need to expand my reading here, um, that Joe, uh, Biden has uh, narrowed down his vice president candidates to four black females. Yes. I want oh, I Michelle thought... Obama to be the vice president. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I mean, I want to be thought... president, but vice president would do for now. <laughs> so is he narrowed it down to four, or has he said he has four women on the I, list? I think it's four women on the list. I, I, I thought think... it was four black women on the list. Yeah, yeah. I, think I think Condoleezza four... Rice is one of them. Because I know Tammy Duckworth. I, I heard that Tammy Duckworth was Yeah, he has, he has multiple women of color, and I think... The, like there's four black women in that list and everyone is being vetted. So the mayor of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, Lance Bottoms. 
Yes. There was Val Demings, Val Demings. Uh, Stacey Abrams, and Kamala Harris. Uh, Susan Rice also. I think Susan Rice, Rice, yes. Susan, Susan Rice, Rice instead of Stacey Abrams. I think Stacey Abrams might have been considered, but maybe no longer. I'm not sure. See, I think the only, I think the smartest choice if you want to win this thing is Stacey Abrams. I love her. I, I think she's the her. smartest choice. Oh, well, actually, let me, let, me, let me disagree a little bit for, for, some, for some spice here. I think my emotional choice for a black woman vice president is Maxine Waters, but that's never going to happen. Well, I love Maxine Auntie Waters Max. Waters would clap back so quickly at Donald Trump, he would be destroyed. It would just be ashes, but that's not going to happen. I she's been around for so cat. long. She's like vintage black girl magic. Like she's I vintage. love her so much, but I can't have that. So yes, Stacey Abrams. And Daya, on behalf of all Indian people, I don't think you should use the word spice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why Columbus fucked up America, so he could get some of this. <laughs> spice is the old pussy. <laughs> Jocelyn just keeps bringing it back to that. <laughs> I know, right? I the day. <laughs> it all goes back to the source. I like, <laughs> I like, I like Hail to the power. power. Our power. Our arbitrary PC-ness is, is cool. I like it. So, like, now, no beef, no spices. <laughs> and my language is called squiggly language. So <laughs> Squiggly. I, know, I, I didn't say that. You said that. I didn't say that. Episode. I'm on board with all of this. <laughs> I'll be the tagline. No spice, no beef, and lots of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> lots of meow, meow. <laughs> okay, well, that wraps up our first episode of... The flow. The show. The flow. <laughs> On the flow.